Hello and welcome to Quizzy Monday. We've got a great show for you tonight. Let me just run through what we've got coming up. Uh, if I can find the right thing to click. Here we go. So coming up tonight, uh, we have Kashava Guha from uh, Mastermind coming on talking about his performance on there. We've got from Only Connect, we have uh, Ian Toms and Nick Paul from University Challenge. We've got a real treat. We've got um, Fatima Sharif from last year's victorious Imperial College team, and Michael Cohen, uh, the coach and the captain of the previous year's um, Imperial College team. They're going to be coming on a little bit later in the show uh, when we get on to talking about University Challenge. But um, let's uh, let's crack on. Let me change the uh, branding a little bit. Get rid of uh, there we are. Get rid of uh, that sidebar. And um, before we get going, I just want to say a, a very big thank you to all of our members, our Patreon members. Uh, there are three tiers of membership, and uh, each month they get different uh, member benefits. And just want to say thank you very much to all of our patrons. <music> Okay, so that's that. If you want to find out uh, more about Patreon, go to patreon.com slash allthingsquiz. Uh, last night we had our monthly Patreons quiz, which was great fun. Uh, quizzes from three continents playing. So if you want to be part of that next month, uh, then join up. Now, let's bring people on. So first and foremost, let's uh, welcome Kashava, um, Nick, and Ian to the stream. Good evening, all. Hello. Good evening. How are we feeling having watched ourselves on TV? Kashava, you go first. Um, how, you know, how did it feel watching it back? You were so yeah, close. I actually don't know if I would have watched it, to be honest, Gareth, if I wasn't coming on, uh, on the show. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to watch it um, for this. But um, yeah, it's, no, it's, it's um, yeah, it is strange when you, when you know what's, you know what's going to happen. But, uh, but to be honest, with you, as it was going on, I mean, I, um, uh, so pretty. I mean, I, I. Well, when I went back for GK, I, I at the end of GK, I thought, okay, I've done enough that Ben will have to do well. And it was pretty uh, clear from early on in his round that he was, mm. he was, you know, on track. And then I sort of relaxed and just watched. Um, <laughs> so it was uh, when I went on Mastermind um, the first time a few years ago. I was uh, had no idea what to expect. But this time when I went on, I thought well, there's always going to be at least one person in your round who's going to be very good. Mm. And so <laughs> that made it that made it easier. Yeah. And he he was good. We'll we'll, we'll go into a bit more depth yeah. on that in a second. Nick, this is not your first time on TV. Uh, is it your first time on a team quiz on TV? No, I did the Great British Quiz many years ago with Janice Long as the host. Okay, so having Remember. done individual and team quiz, how would you rate kind of playing in a, in a team alongside uh, Ian and Hugh? Well, obviously, playing with Ian and you is an absolute pleasure in itself. So I thought it was really, really good. Yeah, but I do have a complaint. I need to oh, start yeah. with a complaint, unfortunately. Yeah. Every time they kept zooming in on me, it was on my bald patch. <laughs> so I'm absolutely furious about that. I, I think I might have looked bald as well. I, mean, <laughs> the camera. I think that there's a chance. Now, Ian, you, you lost the title tonight. I mean, we've called you many things on this channel. Destroyer of Worlds mm -hmm. and all these things. Um, best quiz and never to be on TV until tonight. Mm -hmm. um, how was it for you seeing yourself on, on the telly box for the first time? <laughs> a little bit less cringeworthy than I thought, but still a bit uncomfortable. But yeah, it was, it was all right. <laughs> oh, good. OK, well, we'll get on to quite how all right it was uh, <laughs> a little bit later when we look <laughs> at questions. Uh, if you are watching along, we've got a few people watching at the moment. Um, if you want to put quest uh, comments or questions in the chat, we've got a few. So here we go. Uh, Gerard, uh, is there anybody there, said the traveller, knocking at all things quizzes door? Maybe you were just there early, Gerard, I think. Um, Chris Dyson. Good evening. Played my Brain of London game tonight, so I haven't seen any telly, so no spoilers, please. <laughs> think, Chris. Think, Chris, that might be a little bit difficult <laughs> to avoid spoilers. Um, so uh, maybe maybe watch on catch-up if, uh, if you really need to, because um, kind of talking about who wins is going to be fundamental um, <laughs> due to this. Um, 
Uh, Gerard, tut, hairy people complaining about bald patches. Uh, this, this is Gerard Mackay, for those of us who, uh, <laughs> who know uh, Gerard. And Catherine Burkett says, hi, guys. Well done to all the winners. Um, so the night did kick off uh, with Mastermind. Um, last week, we had a really, really good, uh, very, very tight show. And tonight, you know, between uh, yourself and Ben Kashavra, it was tight. Um, why did you pick... Um, Gary Sobers as a subject. So I, it was well, the first thing I should say is it wasn't very bright because the last time, so when I was on last time, uh, I had Penelope Fitzgerald, who was an English novelist in the in the heat, and then Test cricket between England and India in the semi, and I had a I, I did very well at Penelope Fitzgerald. And I had a complete nightmare on the cricket one, so I should have learned from that not to go back again for <laughs> more cricket. But the real reason I did it was just because. Um, so I. Um, I mean, I'm a little young, younger than the rest of you, but 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 I still grew up sort of uh, in a kind of enough of the pre-internet world. And uh, so when I was a kid, my father would go every year, once a year to the UK on work and he would bring back these old cricket videos. And so I grew up watching these uh, uh, in our, our house sort of cricket was the, was the obsession and these these videos from the 60s and 70s, Richie Benno introducing these mm. compilations of death matches. And so I fell in love with Gary Sobers very early. And the main thing about him was that he could do everything on the cricket pitch. I mean, uh, I don't want to mix up cricket, but like, you know, these days people talk about Sobers versus Gallus, who was the greatest all-rounder. And that really irritates me because it's like, you're reducing people to just what was their batting and bowling average. You mm. know, he was a fast bowler. He was a wrist spinner. He was a finger spinner. He was the best outfielder. He was the best slip fielder. He was the best short leg. He was the best attacking batsman, but he had the highest score in the history of cricket. All of that. He was, a, he was a terrible captain, but he was very good at it. <laughs> Good so, drinker uh, as well, by, uh, yeah, by quite yeah, one yeah, of the questions. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. He 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 was a pretty serious drinker, and um, he used to say that uh, in the West Indies, it, it, you you could drink as much whiskey as you want, but if you drank rum, they would say you were a drinker. So he drank whiskey. <laughs> um, so that, that was the real the real thing. But really, uh, he, the, the, but when I was doing the research, I mean, his his autobiography is really boring. I mean, he's like one of these genius cricketers who isn't actually very interesting as a person or interesting about cricket. But I didn't know that until I sort of started. Uh, yeah. And that, that is always one of the, one of the dangers of um, of doing a, a subject, somebody you're really passionate about or really yeah, interested yeah. in, that, that kind of might spoil it a little bit for you. But yeah, um, yeah. but he's clearly a, a fantastic, uh, fantastic player. Um, and you did really well um, on him. Let me just check my notes. I kind of stumbled a little bit towards no, the yeah. end. Um, but up to that point, you'd been you'd been yeah. storming through, and you got ten out of your thirteen questions. Were you pleased with that um, that amount? So uh, I do. In I mean, it's easy to say in retrospect. I don't mm. think I prepared well enough. Okay. Uh, so if you look at the, the three questions that I got wrong, two of them, I think, if I prepared, if I prepared better, mm. you know, if I more them systematically, because there were things I'd come across, but I hadn't flagged them as. Mm. Uh, things worth remembering, yeah. basically. Hadn't like remembered. the partner when he hit six sixes. Exactly. So I could tell like you everything, everything about the six sixes, who was on commentary, who was the fielder, who dropped the catch, who found which child found the ball, except <laughs> I, you know, I left the partner up. That was that was just, that was a mistake. Yeah. Uh, and the Indian cricketer Ajit Wadekar, that was another one. I, I, I'd read it, but I hadn't flagged it as something that could come up. Mm. The, the third one I felt was a slightly... Um, maybe unnecessarily tricky way of writing a question. Uh, mm -hmm. I knew that Gary Sobers had scored a century at Old Trafford, but in the in the speed of Mastermind and the Black Chair, the way the question was phrased, there mm -hmm. are two rounds that he scored a century. Here's one, which is the other. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think... Yeah. Uh, it's it, a, it's it, another it, step in the thinking that you have to do, mm -hmm. isn't it? It was one of those things where if you, in, in, the, in, the, in the kind of 10 seconds of a QLL match, I'm pretty sure I would have got it. But <coughs> instantly in Mastermind, it just didn't come. And... and, and one or two seconds in mastermind feels like an age when you're yeah. sat there thinking yeah. um it's just it's bizarre so you know 10 seconds would be an immense luxury um only connect it's almost the the, the opposite isn't it time seems to go really really quickly there and actually before before you guys uh, uh, respond to that we have michael and fatima with us hello both of you welcome back onto the stream um it's good to see you so yeah um 
what did anything surprise you, you Nick and Ian, about kind of that sort of uh, studio situation about the, the timing and the and, and experience? Ian, you're nodding very, very nearly. Much. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, Nick. Sorry. No, carry on. Um, well, um, I played quite a lot of um, COQL where you get 60 seconds in the first two rounds, and the change from 60 to 40 was really uh, <laughs> difficult. And obviously, it goes more quickly when you're you're sort of distracted by the lights and everything anyway so <laughs> yeah i really found the 40 seconds very short yeah nick you're... yeah we had a couple of panic buzzes on a couple of occasions didn't we where we were <laughs> almost out of time and had to say something very quickly so yeah <laughs> it's quite a quite a culture shock isn't it the speed thing yeah it is um i don't know michael fatter is there an equivalent in university challenge i mean it, i guess some games just fly by um but I don't know. Is there that sort of distortion of time that goes on? Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm just trying to think. I just, I, I think there's just stuff that completely goes by you. Like, I feel like you can't hold your attention for that long, even though it's only half an hour. So, like, you might, like, get a really speedy buzz and then the next one just goes by you entirely because you just, you know, mm. not with it at all. Um, like, I, I only... Remember, like watching back on the final, there was a question I'd entirely missed, and I don't even remember hearing it. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, yeah. So it really can can play havoc. I think um, it's also it's obvious to people watching that like the first pitch round happens about a third of the win, the music round happens about halfway, in, and the second pitch round two thirds of the win. But especially after the second pitch round, you genuinely have no idea when the bomb's going to go. Mm -hmm. And and likewise, Kashavi, you don't have an idea, I guess, when you're going to hear the the beep beep beep. You don't get the benefit of the, yeah. the music playing in or seeing the little white uh, line going around your score or anything. So you're just kind of going hell for leather, I guess. And, and maybe some people are able to count their uh, count their answers. I obviously I don't think they've been able to to, to do that, but uh, hmm. yeah, yeah. So you you um. Yeah, you you're in second place after the first round, um, guys. Any of you who who watched Mastermind, were there any of the um, specialist subjects that particularly appealed to you, or you found interesting, learned something from? Nick, you're nodding. Laurel, and, I used to be a massive. Well, still, I'm a massive fan of Laurel and Hardy because I see a collection of questions on that was really good. I only got four yeah. of them, but it's really nice to hear questions I should have known. Yeah. So reliving the films as I'm hearing the questions. <laughs> so that was really good. And what was what was wonderful about that was Anu. Hit, knowing where a question was going, thinking of the dialogue yeah. or the yeah. scene, yeah. Him smiling, it was brilliant. Yeah. To himself, yeah. it was absolutely, absolutely beautiful. A guy That's exactly what I was doing. I was remembering the film. Exactly <laughs> what I was doing, laughing along with it. Yeah, I enjoyed that. Um, any anybody for anybody else? Um, I think the only question that I knew in the entirety of the specialist subjects was the one about Isabella Beaton in the Elizabeth uh, David yeah. round. Yeah. I did not know who Elizabeth David was, but <laughs> I've read about Isabella Beaton and she just seems really chaotic. I don't mm -hmm. know if you guys know, but like obviously she founded like um, that she invented the whole idea of putting like ingredients before yeah. a, a recipe rather than having it. it muddled in but mm -hmm. she she was just like the the sheer confidence of the woman she accidentally missed out flour in her first ever cake recipe that she published so she had to like <laughs> and I, think, I think that was one of the questions that eleanor actually didn't get uh, yeah exactly like i think that one's like sometimes you're too deep that you don't know the general was, knowledge for us like <laughs> i mean i don't want to speak for her but i i i, as I remember as i recall she felt that there were lots of questions that were not was about stuff that wasn't important to Elizabeth David's life, but that might be of interest to the viewers at home. Mm -hmm. And that yeah. was how a lot of that round was written. So, because I knew that Isabella Beaton won as well. Um, yeah, but but you know, when you when you're on Mastermind or going on Mastermind, part of the job is anticipating what questions are going to be written, exactly. and also knowing that they're written for the benefit of viewers yeah. as much as yeah. for the the contestant, because mm -hmm. nobody's going to want to say, you know, what did Gary Sober score in a meaningless yeah. match yeah. on a wet Tuesday? Into yeah. you know, you know. Yeah. It's, it's not of interest, is it? Yeah, you know, yeah. but you know, if he hit a shot and it killed a bird mid-flight, that's going to get asked about. Yeah, I don't yeah. know if he did, but you know, possibly. yeah, I, I knew they would ask about his car crash, for example, because that's just mm. one of those things that it's uh, it, you, that you know it's going to come up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we've got a comment here from uh, somebody not too far away from me. I enjoyed the question. Um, 
in question brought back me uh, childhood memories of sobers. Thanks, Kashava. That's Valerie, who is a uh, a native of Barbados, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Um, and therefore I think when the school was mentioned, it's ah, oh, it's like recognition. So, uh, so she particularly um, enjoyed that one. Um, so yeah, Elizabeth David, interesting, knew nothing about her. So it's it's good that a spotlight gets shone on somebody like her, uh, Laurel and Hardy sobers, and then Orkney was the last one, um, and that was the one where Ben um, almost nailed it. Um, hmm. got one I, wrong. I think so. Ben, uh, so remember, I think he spent ten years as a historical tour guide in the Orkney Islands. <laughs> yeah, it almost feels like Orkney cheating, and... doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I think I, I think like, I, I think Ben could have been answering questions from the Orkney Islands for an hour. <laughs> yeah. Which, yeah. given given that one, I wonder why he didn't put that as a later one to have yeah. a potentially yeah. later round in the bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I guess yeah. it's 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 a it's a gamble, isn't it? Because yeah. if you know you got something strong, you know, you still got to get through that first round. It's no good yeah. kind of holding it back. It's like having your best penalty taker for penalty five, and oh, yeah, your yeah. team not even getting there. It's, it's yeah, like yeah. you know, <laughs> um, so all all was a gamble. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, he he was he was strong. The subjects were, were you know, were interesting. Um, I, I I I don't want to get into champagne moment territory, but when we get into uh, the, I think it was in the general knowledge, there was the moment where the question was about Ted Turner, and I think it was Anu said uh, Ted Rogers, yeah, Ted, yeah. and and Clive Myrie is just chuckling yeah. as he's saying the next question because for anybody. Uh, too young. Ted Rogers used to host a really cheesy game show called Three Two One. Um, mm. as, so very not very much. Are you not, not going to do the fingers, Jay? You're not going to do. Oh, the... brilliant! Well <laughs> yeah. done. So uh, it doesn't know. doesn't he start off showing four though? Isn't that when they slowed it down? Didn't they discover that the reason nobody ever did it quite like him was because he wasn't doing Three Two One? <laughs> see, see that that's the knowledge that the Destroyer of Worlds has. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Definitely one for the teenagers, that isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> it is. We're really going to grow the demographic with these anecdotes. So well done, Charles. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, before we just look a little bit more at the uh, the, the general knowledge, I just want to play uh, this about last week's uh, winners of uh, uh, the votes. It was a good week to be Irish last week. Patrick Carthy won the Irish Quizzing Championships and was voted Quizzer of the Week. Second was Alan Gibbs, who came first in Quiz in the North, and Michael McPartland had a great week and came third. Team of the Week was won by Munster, who were the Irish Interprovincial Champions. Second was Cryptics from Only Connect, and third, Cardiff University from University Challenge. You can send in nominations for Quiz or Team of the Week to tinyurl.com slash ATQ nominations. Nominations close at 5pm each Monday UK time. You can nominate any quizzer for any event or any team for any quiz. Okay, so that is slight change. Fatima and Michael, this is all new on you, I guess. It, that's having these little interjections uh, throughout um, <laughs> rather than just doing a big, big one uh, towards the end. So, um, general knowledge... How you know what did you think your chances were? You've been on um Mastermind before, yeah. um, you're a, a regular quizzer in QLL and presumably other things. You know, Ben had done well at a gen, uh, special subject round, that's no guarantee that he's going to do yeah. well at general knowledge. So, what were you thinking after that first round? Huh. So, a couple of things, but so the first is so it, it's everything's so different when you're not British. So, I've uh lived in the UK for two years of my life. Uh, and managed to make it on Mastermind both times. So that was, but, but the, the other the other twenty nine years I haven't been in the UK, and it just means that sort of what a level one is question is is not necessarily a level one for me. Hmm. So I'll give you a very specific example. When I was on this, my Mastermind semi last time, the first question is always supposed to be a, a pretty easy one, and it was something like what are the guards at the Tower of London called? And I had no idea. I just said bus, and I just didn't know. And uh, obviously, when I heard the answer, beef eaters, I thought, oh, yeah, well, of course, everyone's going to know that. It's just, I didn't know it. And it just the rounds are calibrated for somebody who's obviously British. And so <coughs> I, need, I always know going in that I'm going to need a bit of luck. Mm. Uh, I'm going to need I'm going to need the level ones to be stuff that I know, because otherwise uh, it's not going to work. And I thought I had that. So 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 I, so, so in that sense, I yeah. No, no complaints about the questions, but see that, so those were my thoughts. I mean, I I I I I, I did feel that uh, I knew Anu and uh, 
I don't know, we're a little bit behind. And mm. the other thing is, uh, we all spoke beforehand, and I, I knew that Anu and Arunel weren't sort of regular quitters, or as regular. And that meant that there's always going to be this chestnuts that people know from doing quiz, which they don't mm. know otherwise. And um, yeah, so I, th I thought I was within with a shot, and that I would need some luck with the questions. And then when my GK came around by the end, I felt, okay, I had the luck with the questions that I was hoping for, and now I've got a shot. Yeah, and you ended up with a good score. Twenty four is is a score that has won many shows in the past, so um, you got to be happy with that. The problem was Ben just yeah. was relentless. He, yeah. he and and really strong. There's yeah. mm -hmm. not a lot you can do about a performance like that. Um, so yeah, plenty you know plenty of reason to to hold your head up, Shava. Um, would you do this again? I don't really enjoy the preparation. <laughs> I had so this the sort of two mastermind subjects that my two dream mastermind subjects. There was one I did the last time, which was Penelope Fitzgerald, mm -hmm. and that was my one subject. Uh, mm -hmm. I'd read all of her books already. Um, she's not that famous up, like to the general public, so I just wanted to, if I was going to be on TV, I wanted to do that, and I did well because I already knew it, knew her mm -hmm. books well. The other one, which is Richard Linklater's Before Trilogy, I tried very hard and they wouldn't let me do this yeah. time. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, I don't. So like when when I when 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 Ben won, part of my feeling was I wasn't that excited about my potential specialist for the semi. I don't really mind not having to learn all those facts, mm -hmm. and you know, it's lucky to go to get go and get on and yeah. So I don't know if I would do it again. I mean the the. Uh, I'd love to. I mean, I'd love to go back on University Challenge, which I can't now because <laughs> I did it four years ago. But um, yeah, I don't know about Mastermind again. Okay. Doing it the third time, maybe not. <laughs> um, yeah, Michael messaged me like, "You see, alumni." <laughs> um, but uh, why wouldn't they let you do the before trilogy? Is it just too short? Uh, like, is it just because it's just three movies? Or... Yeah, I mean, people do like his dark materials, which is just three books. Mm. Um, yeah, but I guess there's more like there's more mythology. Those books are very dense, aren't they? Yeah. And the third yeah. one is really long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's no, there's no, there's no sort of explanation. Like, for example, another one of my the ones I asked for was um, Edward St. Aubyn's Patrick Melrose novels, which is five novels, mm -hmm. and they don't tell you why. You know. So mm. Oh, they don't give you a reason. Mm. No. Yeah, I know. I know. When I was applying to be on it years ago, and it was like. Sometimes it was somebody else on the sh on the on that series is doing it, or somebody's yeah. doing very something very similar, or it's been done recently, yeah. um, and so there were all sorts of reasons. So I remember spitting feathers when I'd wanted to do Billy Bragg and seeing James Corcoran do it on the same series, and it's like yeah. it's mine. But you know that 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 does happen. Um, Fatima, um, you have just handed in your thesis, um, I believe. So congratulations on that. So would you consider doing, uh, and without spoiling it, the subject of your thesis on Mastermind? Would um, that even be doable? Absolutely not, <laughs> no. Um, for context, everyone, I, I as much as I would love to, um, my thesis is on the podcast, No Such Thing as a Fish. And so that's so oh. many facts <laughs> over, for, over 440 episodes, wow. each an hour long each with like a different tangent for each subject so probably like i don't know like dozens of facts per episode i think i would probably die <laughs> i mean, come out a genius <laughs> but <laughs> i would probably die um yeah. i don't know yeah no so not not the topic and my, and my undergraduate thesis was really dry and boring mm. on lysine deacetylases which nobody wants to hear about so <laughs> Uh, probably yeah. not, no. <laughs> uh, it's a shame. Um, Alexia, who was on last week on our show and on Mastermind, says a lot of my choices were wiped out because they were done a few years ago. So I think there is that kind of, I suppose they don't want people going, oh, it's Harry Potter again. Yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. They don't want that sort of thing. Um, Nick, you've never been done Mastermind, have you? I haven't, no, no. No. Would you consider it? Oh, I think we've had this discussion privately. Ever-decreasing yeah. circles, I seem to remember, might have been the... Well, it would be definitely sitcom based in some form, either that Phoenix Knights or One Foot in the Grave, maybe. One of those three would be my first, well, one of the first choice, yeah. Yeah. But I don't, if, if um, I got through it, I don't suppose they'd let me do uh, sitcoms in every round, would they, if I were lucky enough to get through Probably not. Probably not. No. Um, I'll have to Ian, pretend Ian, I know about highbrow instead. <laughs> 
Ian, now you've broken your duck on TV, would you be tempted? No. <laughs> <laughs> not, not remotely. Fair enough, fair enough. And, and Michael, we know that you were applying, last I heard, for um, for Only Connect. Has, has that, is that happening? Um, it, it, it may Good happen. Good question. <laughs> <laughs> um, no spoilers as to who at least one of my teammates is. Um, <laughs> but yes, uh, we're waiting to see if they're sending out the come and apply thing because I, I don't think it's been officially recommissioned. I'm sure it will I'm be. Sure, but... it will be. Well, that so we're, be we're waiting for that. Um, I think the one I'd want to tackle after that, or if we didn't get on, would be Counterpoint more than last oh, one because yes. I'd like Master Mind <laughs> seems hard to prepare for as yeah. above anything. Mm. And, uh, yeah, yeah. My general knowledge is not up to yeah. it. There used to be an Indian mastermind for four or five seasons many years ago. Mm. If they started that up again, I might apply for, for yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was, um, that, that was curious. There, there are some episodes of that on YouTube, and they yeah, are yeah, interesting yeah, yeah. to watch yeah. because uh, it kind of veers between the, the really accessible for, for a Brit, really accessible, yeah, yeah. And, and wow, okay, yeah, no, exactly. yeah, nowhere yeah. near. But, um, but, you know, I guess if you're watching UK mastermind from outside, probably the same thing um but um yeah okay well we're gonna move on to talk about uh only connect a bit more but yeah well done kshava um it was really enjoyable tonight it was a good episode and you, you played well so um whatever you go on next we wish you the best of luck Thank you, Dad. um now let's have a look at who won the latest what is a question competition Paul Steeples won last week's What is a Question competition, twice cancelled from the last night of the proms in 1997 after the death of Princess Diana, and in 2001 after the 9-11 attacks. This fanfare for orchestra by John Adams is called A Short Ride in a Fast What? And of course, the answer was Machine. Well done, Paul. This week's answer in need of a question is Rush, and we've had over 40 questions. You can now vote on the long list at tinyurl.com slash WITQRush. Voting is open until Wednesday when we release the finalists. Make sure you're following us on Facebook and Twitter so that you can see the word that gets released on Sunday and take part. Okay, so we are back. So um, Valerie was saying that there is a comment. Uh, here we are from Gerard. Thesis on no such thing as a fish. Excellent. You have approval. This this could be a book, Fatima. It could be a po could be a podcast in itself. Very meta. You could be doing a podcast about a podcast. There is a an entire career to come. And uh, Pam uh, Pam Douglas, who won our members quiz last night, says uh, I had two subjects turned down. They don't tell you why. Um, and Gerard is saying. I have no confidence in my ability to maintain a concentration span to learn anything in depth. And there is that to it um, for Mastermind. Um, and Only Connect is a slightly different thing. It's, it's more about technique. You can't necessarily learn things that might come up, certainly after so many seasons. Um, mm -hmm. Nick and Ian, you had a quite long journey to appearing on the show, didn't you? You... You were like accepted a couple of times round, and then for various reasons had to put it off. Um, was it worth the wait? Yeah, yeah, I, I very much enjoyed it. I think I think Nick did too. Yeah, indeed, I did. Yes, yeah. Despite some reservations before doing it, I did enjoy it very much. In fact, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, because you've been waiting at least what three series or something like that. There was something that had uh, come up each time. Yeah. Um, and I know Hugh, the third member of your team, had really, really wanted to do it. Um, and you must have heard in all that time, everybody talking about how wonderful it is in terms of how they look after you and all of that sort of thing. So did it did it live up to that side of it as well? Very much so. Yeah, yeah, they were lovely. Yeah. 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 So when you I'm stepped like... in, into the studio for the first time, um, you know, and particularly you in from you know, being in front of the camera for the for the first time. Mm -hmm. Did you find it easy to make that transition, uh, or was or was it just like playing Connections Online Quiz League, but in a in a nicer room kind of thing? I'm not I'm I'm not dissing your room. I'm sure your room is lovely. <laughs> but, um, you, know, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I mostly found it pretty. I mean, the the fact was, I found the questions a lot harder than I'm used to in COQL. And I don't know if that was just because I was on TV or or because they just didn't suit me as well. But yeah, I mean. We were sort of asked, you know, uh, when we were getting made up, you know, do you swear a lot when you get nervous? And I was like, well, 
I'm not really thinking. I'll be nervous. I've done so many quizzes. I'm hoping I'll be all right. And I don't think I did get nervous. I just didn't know what they were asking. <laughs> and it was tough, though. Those first couple of rounds, there was uh, yeah. three points each at the end of it. Was the, You picked up the music um, on a transfer. I knew, I mean, I knew as soon as I heard Hell to the Chief, I thought the first thing Nick is going to be thinking is West Wing. Um <laughs> Yeah, but you want to think that about everything. When any question comes up, I think West Wing, Joe, you know that. <laughs> Apart from the audition question, of course. Oh, yes, thanks, Ian. Thanks very much indeed. Oh, yeah, thank tell you. us about that, Ian. Give us an insight. Yes, into please, that. please do tell us about that, Ian. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, just um, there were people with initials that uh, perhaps I felt Nick, once we worked out what was going on, should have recognised one of I'll, the people. All right, I'll tell it. There was a picture of Aaron Sorkin who I didn't recognise. <laughs> <laughs> ah well, I mean, <laughs> he only created one of the greatest TV yes, series. Yes, I know. Yeah. Magic, so that's... yeah, but you. To be fair, I feel like you don't really know what these people look like, do you? You're like you know the name, and then like, and then mm. someone will show you the face and go, hmm. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll go with that answer. That sounds yeah. good to me. Yeah. <laughs> you knew Aka built though, didn't you? <laughs> well, yeah. Oh, everybody <laughs> knows Aka built. Like Aaron Sorkin, yeah. <laughs> um, but in that first round, uh, there was a little bit of a. Uh, a generous adjudication. D Ian, did you, on that medical equipment one, mm -hmm. is that, because you got it as soon as kind of after you'd had the yeah. opportunity, was that something, you know, not getting something that you, you think you might have got, did that knock your confidence a little bit? I, I don't think it did. I was certainly annoyed because, <laughs> you know, once, once you sort of tweak what was going on, it was really quite straightforward, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, 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 I think we were, we were just sort of determined to try and enjoy it. So I think I just sort of shrugged it off and, and tried to carry on with the next one, basically. Yeah, I mean, that, and that's a brilliant um, brilliant attitude. Um, watching it, anybody else? I mean, in terms of the questions that came through, I thought I thought there were some particularly nice ones, but I, I want to see if anything jumped out to, to any of you. Michael, how about you? So I noted down how we had it. Unfortunately, we didn't hear much of Ian and Nick speaking because we were watching along as a team and had you muted so that in case you were discussing the right line of thing, we weren't going to. And we got one point across the whole first round. I thought the first round just seemed us. unnaturally hard. And I think it was a balance of hard and then stuff that was immediately obvious after it had been said. And maybe if the other questions had been easier... They might have been up. I don't know. We had. A I was, I was nice... yelling. I was like, "Speak, monomanometers, your easy part." <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I thought a lot of the sequences were very nice. The anagrams of twelve eighty nine. Yeah. And this the stuff that moved to channel five, just because that was quite yeah. specific. Yeah. yeah, and you're you're kind of around the right area on that one, but not yeah. 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 Mm. Ish. Michael Hutchinson figured out we were like me, me and me and my and me and Michael K were just like hands hands in the middle and <laughs> Michael Hutchinson just unmuted his zoom and started singing <laughs> and, and talking of singing Nick well done on not joining in the singing <laughs> now to be fair I would normally be quite happy to sing along but I absolutely loathe that song so I've no intention of ever singing it at any point so that's the only reason I didn't <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, 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 thought, <laughs> I thought one of the good aspects of being on with somebody who's in a choir was I wouldn't even consider singing and then just found myself joining in. <laughs> I didn't believe I did, but fortunately I couldn't really hear myself. I didn't think on the TV. So. Well, that's it. Now, now you've not only appeared on a quiz show, but you sung on TV. So mm. um, you know that's a, a tick off another life achievement. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Kashava, did you uh, did you watch it and did you spot yeah, anything? Yeah, yeah. I did, I did. Uh, I mean, I uh, only connect is the, one, the the show that most in where I really want. I, I really feel like it's e it's easier watching uh, because it like something like the, the 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 I mean the one to me that I sort of you know, felt like you know the the the, 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 the sort of, obviously the the best moment you're watching only connect when you when you get the when you get the five pointer sitting at home. So for me, that was the pillar, the pillar of salt uh, sequence. Because uh, I was like, what other one of salt could it be? But it, I, it just one of it's, I, I, I mean, just watching you, I felt it seems like it's going to be much harder. Mm. If it with the yeah. ones 
in and, 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 in, and in the studio, you have that dilemma of even exactly. if you think if you even think pillar of, pillar of salt, yeah. are you really going to go for it on on yeah. one clue, knowing that that is your go? You exactly. don't get another shot at it. I think um, you said yeah, my, it at the end, didn't you? I, I, I think yeah, my, possibly on the second clue, but yeah. 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 Yeah, I I the thing is I was hesitant to go for the first one because I've like the film Carol is based on the novel Price of Salt. Price so of I was salt, like that yeah. could be Price of Salt, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Um mm. but Pillars the of Creation Goblin is Golf Major Champions inserted <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> from novels. Yeah. Uh, but there was that wonderful moment when that realization almost visually swept across the team that it was pillars on, on yeah, the five yeah. of islam yeah and yeah, then yeah. R- the rapid thinking i think on your part in to get to um pillars of wisdom um mm. i thought that i mean that was that was a lovely a lovely moment in that ra- in that in that question that was um, a relief to to get something <laughs> out of my mouth on one second that sort of made sense yeah and, and well think... done on the uh, chris silverwood one because yeah. um yeah I, I was busy um uh, doing old uh, Brenda McCullum um, yeah. at that point. Going, oh, yeah, no, that, that was one where I, I saw the question and I was sort of being a little too clever and I thought, I saw Moores and I thought it's going to be Moores again because Moores was coached twice. Because hmm. uh, he was he was coached both before and after Flower. Yeah. Uh, but uh, no, then, of course, it became clear that it was... It was sort of Our like, opposition were unlucky because they just they knew he just got the wrong yeah, they seat. Knew it, exactly, exactly, wrong, exactly, yeah. they, were, they were well onto it. Just yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Fortunately for us. Yeah. Uh, Pam's put the uh, the missing double letters one. Oh. Uh, she liked that. Um, I loved that, that was... one because we spotted it, and I said "quaka," so like "qua" for, my, <laughs> for the for the double K. Yeah. And then I saw bookkeeper, and I was like, "Ah, oh, mine's more fun." <laughs> <laughs> you got to love a a quaka, that's for sure. Um, I'm just having a look. It's been seven pillars of what? Seven pillars of pillar showroom. Oh, Gerard, I can't keep up. Oh no, that's Catherine. Sorry, that's Catherine. And uh, Gerard is always like, "Lots had wacky for the missing." I th- I th- oh, okay, yes, <laughs> <coughs> yes. Um, yeah, maybe not. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think I think we can say that word on on. But and anyway, let's let's not move risk. Along. Let's not think no. to move along. Uh, Valerie, <laughs> Valerie is insisting. Uh, exactly, producer other... decision. <laughs> <laughs> indeed, indeed, I'm being. Uh, uh, overall, um, what one one nice li- nice little uh, nod for for quizzes in that round was the uh, things that happened in 1982. Ian, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yes, uh, it may have been heard by some, maybe not heard by all, but uh, it was heard by one person who contacted me, <laughs> but not not. Yeah, it was, it was, I, I think it was, are we talking about the Jenny Ryan? Yeah, Birth Jenny, Jenny Ryan. Ryan. Yes, yeah, I did. Yeah, think so. I mean, <laughs> in my defence, she had been celebrating her birthday around that time so it was sort of, and also anytime you go near 1981 i think oh my birthday so if it's the year after somebody else's <laughs> birthday so. yeah no I, I thought it was nice um you know I, one of my dreams uh, and i've never done it but one of my dreams when i first went on mastermind was if i don't know an answer i'm going to give the name of a friend so they get name checked <laughs> i've never actually had the presence of mind uh, to do that on a show and usually go down the Smith route, which um, which I believe you did, Kashava, tonight. I did, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I um... did keep a Smith count. There were two Smiths. Yeah. <laughs> but um, should... Ian actually did that when he was on Mastermind for me, because I guess he does the only Arabic name he could think of. It was what the Arabic name for light, meaning light, which is actually Noor, but he didn't know, so he said Fatima, and I was like... Oh. <laughs> I think this is Ian Wang. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Ian Wang, not that Ian. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ian, this Ian hasn't forgotten his mastermind appearance. Um, <laughs> but Ian Wang, a finalist from last year's mastermind and a very nice guy and uh, yeah, did very well. So yeah, um, walls, you smashed, you smashed your wall. I thought you handled that thoroughly. I mean, again, going back to the amount of time, had you practiced tactics and you know, the sort of things that you should be looking for on walls? Have you been playing loads of walls? Or do you just rock up and naturally smash it? Ian was very methodical with the wall. Very methodical. Yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd done a couple of COQL walls as, as captain, sort of staying to let me 
trying to prep. Mm. But no, we, we hadn't really we hadn't done any walls as a team. Um mm. but uh, uh, yeah. But yeah, I mean you you, you uh there were lots of red herrings in that set, mm -hmm. I thought. Um as Pam saying, excellent bird spotting. But then to find the uh the birds that could also be rugby club nicknames yeah that was um was was re a really nice kind of um solution which kind of opened the door i think unlocked unlocked mm -hmm. the wall for the rest of it for you um yeah i mean i'd say my note here was smashed the wall what did you make of the opponent's wall nasty. It was, i thought it was harder yeah definitely harder, harder than definitely. ours much harder yeah. than ours i thought one of their four sets was really hard which was the word one this the, the chi the chihuahua chinook yeah I, so I got, I got that one because the Chihuahua, Chihuahua, but I didn't know the ab the was it with the advertising agencies was that recruit, recruit. 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 it was the recruit recruit that was recruit. that was, yeah. that yeah. was yeah. tough no idea, no idea yeah. about that at all the, yeah. the recruitment I'm pretty sure was what would have killed us on that yeah unless, definitely unless yeah. it turns out to be a surprise special but, but it is you you, you no, do need really. somebody on your team to kind of unpick something because they for me mm -hmm. and I said it's Valerie when we're watching the the Huawa I said Chi. Because yeah, exactly, yeah, the only exactly time right, I've ever right, seen right. HUA, HUA yeah. like that yeah, is in yeah, Chihuahua. Yeah. And then yeah. you look for other things it can yeah, go yeah. in front of. Right. But, you know, I, I'd never heard of Impelum or whatever it is. And, yeah. you know, I've, nice. I've used Haze, I've used right. Manpower, and I've shared a floor at work with a Deco. But I've never heard of the other one. So I'd have been going around, hmm, <laughs> I don't know, Attenborough, I mean, Reed. Reed is one we've used as well. So that All was right. a red herring. So mm -hmm. it was it was tricky. Mm, I, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean we we went second because i didn't want to wait around before the wall and mm. it turned out i'm pretty sure they said they would have chosen the one they ended up with so it didn't actually matter well, but uh, okay. it, it definitely was good luck for us that we we didn't get that yeah without a doubt yeah and it it, it is um it is a weird thing vanessa's saying you know i knew three of them but not a pet and pelham yeah. um mm. pam Spotted Chi straight away. Knew the job agencies as I've registered with three of them at one time. That oh, sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Life experience can really, you know, rather than sort of general mm -hmm. knowledge, can really make a difference in that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Um, so yeah. Uh, before we, well, one thing I had, I, I gave a really fascinating at one point. I think it was on the set the um, the snooker question. <laughs> yeah. I gave Victoria a fascinating definition of the screw shot, and it didn't even make the show. <laughs> I can't believe that, Nick. I couldn't yeah. believe it. Good five oh, minutes and talking her through the screw shot and nothing. Yeah. yeah. The amount of chalk the Americans on the call it and this and all that. Yeah, yeah. The full works, but nothing on the show. And they cut wow. out you being beaten by Sean Murphy when he was a child. I never used that, to be fair, no. Well, I, I mentioned that you'd played Sean Murphy. Yeah, that's true. You did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and again, that was a nice question because when, when you, know, you got screw and then you... And it's like, but what was that other one? And then that realization, plod. It was like, I think a lot of quizzes can kind of um, identify with that sort of thing. It yeah. must be obvious. It must be obvious. Oh, there it is. Um, it was good. Yeah, I, I, I just thought that it was a specific plant and I didn't know what it was. But uh, yeah. <laughs> Reaching for the Latin name or something. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, and then, you know, you're going in seven points up anyway. And I said it on Twitter. But one of the best so, uh, missing vowels rounds by an individual I've ever seen. Um, you were just, you got nine on your own. Mm. It's just phenomenally. And I mean, it's in that sort of thing. But you are a very good buzzer anyway. Do you know, for Brilliant. you, is it just, Brilliant. were you anticipating or were you just seeing them immediately? No, I, I didn't anticipate any of them. Um, I, I think I was quite lucky. They were very much quiz question vowels basically mm. the, yeah. there wasn't there wasn't much wordplay there wasn't much so the 1922 thing. thing really worked yeah. in your favor and yeah Stan, Stan Lee looked like one which you had to work out a bit yeah true Stanley I I, I did think Stalin which that's the only one did. I beat Michael to was Stan <laughs> Lee and he's yeah. the Marvel fan let it be known <laughs> you also beat me to the beautiful and damned yes yeah, I, I <laughs> That one I thought was the beautiful and the damned, and that just completely yeah. threw me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but it, it was just glorious that the books are 22, died in 22, born in 22. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, you still have to be the first in. And I think yeah. 
they they got one and and a neg and the rest yeah. was with you nick when you were sitting there um as a passenger to the mm. Ian Ian Tom's show, absolutely. Um, <laughs> I just it... I just about finished reading the letters as Ian had buzzed in with the correct answer, so I was <laughs> chances of being anywhere near that speed is well, certainly not going to happen. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I mean, it was incredibly impressive, and that's with a delay with delay on broadcast in yeah. the studio. It was an awful lot quicker. It was just like mm. lightning. It really was incredible to see. Was. And I'm glad he was on our side, not the opposition. That's all I can say. <laughs> well. I mean, it was it was superb, a, a big victory at the end of the day. Um, mm. We will see you in round two, um, and you know, you will have put down a marker to a lot of uh, a lot of teams. Um, mm. Well, obviously, the whole thing's been filmed now, so actually, yes. anybody watching it now, it's too late. <laughs> but <laughs> but certainly for viewers, um, it will have it will have put down a marker as, as a team to watch. And Ian, um, you lived up to the hype, um, mm. and uh, you know. <laughs> It was it was tremendous play. So um yeah, really well done. Now Destroyer of vowels. <laughs> <laughs> he has a new title. <laughs> <laughs> that um, is the video title. Thank you. Destroyer of vowels. Oh, <laughs> I think... You're welcome, Valerie. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think 1982 was the, the first um Adrian Mole book, and Adrian Mole wrote an entire novel without vowels. Oh, okay. Another, uh, uh, that would have been a nice one nice. to throw in. Yeah. We very went easy. with the very quizlisty um, Gabriel Garcia Marquez wins Nobel Prize in the back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, we could just do an entire like our what is a question competition, but just give a year and people have to do the, <laughs> yeah, the yeah. best fact. Um, yeah, I mean that would be fun. I would play that. That would be very fun. Um. Are we allowed to talk about COQL this week or, or um not? has it has the, has the week completed? Um it has, there right? was one, yeah. there was one match that was all... played, I think, uh near today. Like well, our match has been chance. uploaded, so I think they must ah. have cleared the set. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so it's so it's the week finished. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, for the the one week we're team of the the one week we're game of the week, and it's the one week I'm sitting out. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. my God. Uh, oh, well, we'll look in forward which, to that. So that yeah, is on in YouTube. which Liam Hughes is our Ian when it comes to the missing vowels, and then I get my moment. Oh. <laughs> We are looking at Michael uh, McPartland uh, is saying the polls have gone up, question, so it's all clear. And Will Jones yeah. is saying, yeah, it's complete. So that will be findable on the uh, online Quiz League's uh, YouTube channel. Um, uh, will, if you're, you're watching, uh, if you want to post the link in the uh, in the chat, then feel free. Um, and um, so, yeah, Fatou, was there anything to say about that beyond the fact that you're on it? <laughs> Beyond the fact that I'm on it, you guys should go watch it for that very reason. Uh, I know it's it's always it's always fun when you're having a tough week and the question don't fall your way is when you're being recorded. That's always fun, but it was a, oh, it was yes. enjoyable all the same. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Well, but we are going to move CQL now. If if we do end up playing Cardi B, I'm, I'm very scared for Mr. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as as well you should be. Um, I'm going to play a uh, lunchtime quiz time uh, trailer and then we're going to talk about University Challenge. Join us for lunchtime quiz time every day between 12 and 2. At 12 o'clock we release a question and at 2 o'clock we give you the answer with some supplementary information. We play lunchtime quiz time on both Twitter and Facebook. We are at Things Quiz on Twitter and search on Facebook for the All Things Quiz Facebook group. Okay, so University Challenge, Cranfield University, who uh, back in the day I had the privilege of getting on the show um, and um, and Royal Holloway and Bedford New College. A um, couple of mature teams made for a, an interesting match. Michael, Fatima, what did you make of, uh, of that particular episode? It was what decent. did we make of it? Yeah, I enjoyed the questions. Um, uh, we were playing along, so I don't know how much we played attention to the performances, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, a lot of decent buzzes, very slow bones mm. work from both teams. Mm. Especially when I think they were just, I think even 
I don't mean to be patronising to either teams because I was definitely guilty of it a lot, but they like overestimated the question, mm. <laughs> where like the answer was something that was easier than they thought it was. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I definitely saw some of that. Um, I thought the early on it felt like it was going to be a really tight match. Um, mm. They were trading blows. Raw Holloway got two buzzes. Cranfield got two buzzes. Then Raw Holloway and then Cranfield, and it felt like this could be. You know, another another great match. Um, and then Roy Holloway just pulled away and uh, never really let Cranfield Cranfield back in. But I I did think there were some some nice questions in there. When yeah. you're playing along, and to anybody else, any any questions or or bonus sets that um, you particularly enjoyed? The well, turtles. Have... The turtles were fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, Haunting of Hill House, Shirley Jackson. I love Ooh, Shirley Jackson. Shirley Jackson. Yeah. yeah, that was great. Um, the... I like the trains music question. Yes, yeah. I like that. And I, and I said on Twitter, I, I, I was hoping for Last Train to Trans Central, but yeah. um, they went a little bit. More I was hoping for the Last Train, Last Train to London um, by Electric Light Orchestra. That was the one I was hoping oh, for. Oh, yeah. So there's another round there if you're watching Universal mm -hmm. Challenge writers, you can do yeah. uh training by yeah, just... flash and put that in as well. Yeah. Does this train stop mm. on Merseyside by yeah. um in the Bangles? But yeah. Um yeah. so I carry on fast around. I can see you've <laughs> got your notes. Got my notes. <laughs> Firstly, Michael, we won. We scored 190. <laughs> 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 um, because Michael got loads of starters in the second half. Um, I love the Anne of Green Gables, the green question. That was good. Wait, no, I don't know what the first wanna, thing was. Wait, I want I want to complain about that question because, <laughs> because it was it was fine in the end, but the the, the the question starts by saying the which adjective and which David Mitchell starts by saying David Mitchell novel from two thousand six. The in that novel title, green is a noun, black is the adjective. Ooh. I would love to create a way of saying black because black is the adjective in the title of that novel. Wow. <laughs> o o only a quizzer or a linguist could be, uh, yeah. could be, uh, could be the that. Novel the novel is called Black Swan Green, which like village green, you know. Uh, it's, oh. yeah. So black I is see, the adjective. I did not fall into that <laughs> trap because I buzzed on out of Green Gables. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm always um, saying that there should be more children's literature and quiz, so that made yeah, me happy. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, and the oh, Renee Zellweger, I love a filmography question. So as, as soon as I start listing characters, I, I buzz. Yeah, yeah, that was um, that was good. Base. I mean, there was some there were some good good players in there as well in terms of the buzzers. There were some, you know, it, none of them were a one person team, which was nice to see and. and some critical buzzes from different people at different times. Um, foreign language TV, always nice to see that. It felt like <coughs> one of the easier yeah. picture rounds, though, because they were all kind of fairly well known. The Bridge, um, uh, The Killing, the Spiral. They weren't kind of terribly would obscure. Say, would you say, Garrett, the US gate was also a pretty, easy, pretty soft picture round? Um, um, not, for the, 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 not for me. Not for me either. <laughs> yeah, I know. I think it's because they were asking for multiple, yeah, yeah, right? So it kind of, yeah. I don't know, or like it was kind of fuzzy, I think. Yeah, yeah. The, the starter was okay, but the bonuses I would have been. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, you, you have to have that kind of visual memory for, for the state borders, don't you, to kind yeah, of yeah. do it. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah. I played a lot of, played a lot of sport. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, we got. It was uh, it was not nice silly Shangri La's on both shows tonight though, wasn't it? Yes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. On the only Connect and University Challenge, questions on the Shangri La's. That's got to be a good thing. Indeed. Yeah. yeah. Yes, because they were the starter. That sound, yeah, it sounded yeah. very um, uh, Phil Spectory. So yeah, I can yeah. see why the, why the guesses came in as they yeah, did. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, on it. But, um, but yeah, I mean, what have you made of the series so far, Michael and Fatima? Have, have any teams or players really stood out to you so um, far? I want to complain about the first episode uh, yeah. matchup because they've been, I think, far and away the best two teams we've seen over. So we see mm. what ten teams now, mm -hmm. and the mm. best two were P 
pitched against each other in the first episode. Yeah, it would be um, like if yeah. in my series we had to play Edinburgh in our first round, for example. Like it's mm. it's harsh. It's harsh match match. Yeah, but um, it's one of those is that Harry Skillers team? Yeah. Or? Yeah. yeah, sorry. I don't know. I think there's only so much information they can get from an interview. Mm. Um, and I don't mm. think any of the university challenge people are ca- trawling through all of the quiz bowl stats um, <laughs> to find out extra information. <laughs> but um, yeah. there have been some decently high scoring games. I thought the winning teams have been decent apart mm. from the first match. None of the teams I've been like, this is an incredible team. Mm. Uh, yeah. All of them have been good. Yeah, And none of the teams have really made me question why they were cast in the first place Mm. yeah there's no there's no like absolute obliterations where you feel bad for anyone i feel like everyone's held their own and done well Mm. which is nice to see i think yeah Um, it'll be very interesting to see where the cutoff is for the high scoring losers um Mm. because it will probably be a relatively low score historically i guess but as you say we we, there's at least one good team we might not see but I'm, i'm hopeful um, I mean, Harris Scully was great in that first game and yeah. ended up on the winning on the yeah. losing side. Um, uh, Durham won. Uh, Bristol. Lost. Durham won. So it's uh, but Jacob game. McLaughlin is very good on the other team as oh, well. Oh yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I like to call him my quiz ball nemesis because I'd, I'd say I'm always sort of very level with him. I always end up playing him in like the final mm. matches and like our stats are always very similar. So he's kind of like tip mm. my hat to him <laughs> for yeah. my hijab, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> But it's it's always very difficult to tell because they film it and they don't know what the scores are going to be when they Mm. put the episodes out. So in my series, by the time you got to episode four, which was my episode, you'd already Mm. seen three of the four highest scoring losing teams. Mm. And of course, there were another 10 episodes to go. And in other series, you could see all, you could theoretically see the four highest scores in episodes 11, 12, 13, and 14. So Mm. we just really don't know. Do you think there's an argument for for restructuring the competition so that <clears throat> rather than having sort of the, the more convoluted later stage, you actually have a, a first round losers repechage, and then it's straight knockout from there? Or am I just kind um, of overcomplicating as, something that's overcomplicated already? As someone on a team who lost their first round match and lost a quarter final, I very much like it and won <laughs> where you needed to win. Uh, I very much like it how it is. <laughs> 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 yeah, Michael's like, please no. <laughs> um, there was that one player, was it the captain of, God, I think it was an Oxford college. There was one player who I think is a decent quiz bowler and he got a lot of starters when he played, mm. like nine starters. Is it yeah. Q- Q-na- Q-Nanon? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. He was yeah. very, very good. So he was yeah. he was quite fun to watch. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that was weird because he was so good on the buzzer and then there were some mm. questions that his mm. that I think the other team were probably kicking themselves over because mm. that team had absolutely no idea. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I mean the, the questions that we had Lillian Crawford on a couple of weeks ago and she was talking about how uh canon expansion and what and what they've been doing trying to change it. And again, I think you know, I thought there was a good mix tonight in terms of um the subject matter, some very classic yeah. stuff on elements and um, time periods. You, 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 hit, and... you hit all of the all of the classic women in STEM. You had Mary Curie, you had uh, yeah. Jocelyn Bell Burnell, you had uh, Dorothy Hodgkin. So yeah, yeah. The, that was good. Yeah. That was good. Um, it was yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it was it was a it was a good episode. I really I enjoyed it, but it wasn't it wasn't thrilling because right. you know it was decided about two-thirds of the way through really yeah. who was going to be winning that episode yeah. but um but i mean ian nick um when you're watching it are you mentally playing along with it um or is it not not your thing usually i am i mean tonight to be honest i was kind of distracted by, <laughs> yeah, by text messages and, and, yeah. and sort of just sort of really at some of the bits of of only connect but um yeah normally I, i'm enthusiastic and play along yeah can i, can I ask a question of, of, mm. about being on university challenge yeah go on yeah um so do you in the first round deliberately try and play at a faster tempo to to 
improve your best loser chances or, or not? Or does that not yeah. um, enter into your mind? I think for us, we were just um, going as fast as we could. Um, I think once I, I, once we hit the 200 point mark, we were like, we're probably fine. Yes. But I think we couldn't really rest for that match. <laughs> Um, I know that Michael, when he started doing this like little, we got to speed it up thing in his first round match. Yeah. Um, well, so you you do think of it because you like you do think like like I think you know obviously you do, you do feel some kind of safety once you've hit like one sixty mark and you're mm -hmm. like okay this is the good territory where we'll come back even if we lose. Yeah. Mm. So the teams that I've advised for when they were on the show definitely the one of the first pieces of advice I gave them for the first round was just aim for 150, 160, don't think about winning because then at least you have that safety net. When it was my team, we were down at, at the picture end, we were on something like 50. So we just got in as much as we could. And it just happened that our content was towards the end. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so I was only doing that because I realized quite how little time we had and quite how much ground we had to cover in that time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Kashava, you've been on UC. How, how, I really you, enjoyed you, your team. Yeah. Have you have you noticed any change since you were on in the last few years? Not really. No, I think I mean, the, 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 today's episode made me think a lot about our team because I'd imagine Cranfield. I was uh, my, I was uh, my team was Goldsmiths, which is sort of the anti-imperial in that there's no science degrees <laughs> at. Uh, it was basically an art college, uh, and. Uh, and, but because Imperial has a quiz bowl team, which Goldsmiths does not. I mean, Goldsmiths has no quiz of any kind happening. And the the, the, the difficult thing for us, um, I didn't, you know, I wasn't the captain. I wasn't leading the effort. I might have done this if I was, but we didn't, we, I, I, we, how do you find a scientist? We, we probably have to found someone who did a science BA somewhere else mm -hmm. and had now come to Goldsmiths was doing film or media or something like that. And that person I'm sure exists, but... <laughs> Sort of seemed quite difficult to go out and find them, and so it was just the people who showed up. But it meant that we, between the four of us, we knew no science at all. And looking at Cranfield today, I think they had a similar issue with maybe humanities. Mm -hmm. uh, there were there were just some they, 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 there was a lot of overlap in what they knew, and there were some gaps which they didn't have anyone on their team who could who could fill. I suppose with Imperial because you do have quiz board, you have a quiz some kind of yeah. quizzing culture. Can I funny. jump in here as the resident UK Keeping Committee member and say that? <laughs> Until my second year, when that Imperial team had, yeah. at the time, or then no one else knew that they, they had won the thing, um, <laughs> there wasn't really much of an Imperial quiz site, and it was yeah. built up by people who'd been on the show, and then that led yeah. to better teams. And it's ha it's happened across the country. Bristol Quiz Society is quite new. Durham yeah. is only yeah. just I'm arrived last week, and it's only just really finding yeah. its grounds edinburgh as well so if there are people mm. watching this chat who are from unis that don't have a quiz society mm. may build it and they will come out. <laughs> <laughs> oh. indeed indeed <laughs> um i will right. say though that like i think it is it's definitely easier to go from mm. science to a humanity in terms of learning a quiz subject yeah. Well, um yeah. but i think people then assume that People also assume that Imperial don't know any humanities when I think every every single person on my team would pick a not science subject as their specialism. Um, yeah. I think as all, I think I think I think I would say Imperial quiz is almost an escape from the science, so we're almost yeah. much better at the yeah. humanities than we are at our own yeah. degree subjects. No, I, come I, to I, think I, of I it, think <laughs> in general, people people in the sciences tend to be know quite a bit more about the humanities, mm. like you know, because they like music or film or literature anyway. Mm. And I think that, you know, very often, especially in a um, in this country, you know, if, you, if you're in the humanities, you probably didn't do any science at the day level. You might have done maths, but mm. not much yeah. more than that. You're tracked so early on and, you know, then you and then the sciences start to feel more and more, more and more foreign. So, yeah, I mean, I think it goes into it. Have been easy it what is also interesting, and I've definitely heard people like Raheem talk about this, is that like quiz science isn't science. Yeah. Um, at least like you can do you can do yeah. a whole degree and not have anything like like for example Gilbert is an incredible chemistry like incredible at his degree but the 
stuff that he learns is far too complex to be asked yeah. about and people at home mm -hmm. to recognize. Um, yeah. So I would, so like, um, it's almost easier to learn, say, your Nobel laureates and your periodic yeah, table yeah. and that kind of thing and go, go from there. So like, aside from the actual questions that then ask you to the calculate the speed of something, which I refuse to. Like today from. I knew John Bardeen because that's just a quiz chestnut. That, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, exactly. So it's it's sort of more about knowing the chestnuts, mm. I think, than it is about. And, and for example, like we we always joke that Selene, who's a who's a, who's a classic student, but is a noted science player because she she gets some really good science buzzes. <laughs> but yeah, that, that discussion because there was um it was on Twitter, wasn't it, about it? Because I I've always felt I stopped doing science at school at sixteen, <laughs> and even sort of undergraduate level science, I don't have that grounding. And people say, oh, it's really easy. You know, they'll look at a, a, a chemical formula diagram. I can't even, don't even know the proper way of describing it. You know, yeah. the hexagons and the lines and with a yeah. C and an O and, you know, yeah. I look at that and it means nothing. Whereas other people, it, it automatically speaks to them. And so I think, you know, whereas I did a history degree and anybody could pick up a book that I used university read it understand it and know the stuff that would yeah. come up and because it's because my degree was about understanding why things happened yeah. and the facts were kind of way way markers on it but you know it's um so those things get asked about and anybody can access them so i always do feel um that i am playing a little bit catch up but i do get the whole point of you know the stuff that gets asked about science in quiz like you know what is the what is the original meaning of this element's name or stuff like that that's mm -hmm. not really science that's not gonna yeah. help you you know solve cold fusion um you know so it's, <laughs> yeah. yeah my degree has only really come up twice because also sometimes when they ask about maths they ask about history of maths because yeah. mm -hmm. you can ask about famous mathematicians and often you just don't learn about the people who are doing the maths because it's actually the maths itself mm -hmm. that's important and mm -hmm. it's, it came up once on uc which was like the only topology question in our series came up in one of our matches and it was like a crucial buzz <laughs> and sciences for people who studied science at university are better represented in quiz bowl mm. um because of the because you can ask really deep stuff at the beginning of the question and end with an easy answer yeah that's yeah. true but my my pet specialism doesn't come up very often which is just anatomy and i got i once got an only connect five pointer from an anatomy uh, clue, but uh, yeah, it doesn't come up very often, which is sad because we all have the muscles yeah. and the bones. <laughs> <laughs> we all do. She's and representing the for, for the skeleton. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, now, on, on that note, let's run through the nominations for Quizzer and Team of the Week for this week. This week's Quizzer of the Week nominees are Jack Bennett, the top scorer of those who got 13 out of 15 in Pop Culture Challenge, Pam Douglas, who won the All Things Quiz Members Quiz. Kishava Guha, who got 14 out of 15 in Mimi as well. Davit Highland, who won a PCC match with a tiebreaker against top opposition. Jimmy Lee, who got 14 out of 15 in Mimi as well. Tonight's Mastermind winner, Dom Tate, the only OQL full house of the week. Jill Taylor, Brain of Britain's Heat 9 winner. And Sarah Trevathan, Brain of Britain's Heat 8 winner. And the nominees for Team of the Week. Aardvarks, who beat the Premiership Leaders in the Asian Quiz League. Educated Guess, who beat the leaders of OQL Division 5B. Krypton Currency, who won the Battle of the Brains competition at SporkleCon. Mangoes, who got the top score in OQL last week. Tonight's Only Connect winners and tonight's University Challenge winners. You can now vote for your winner at tinyurl.com slash QW26SCP and the voting is open until 6pm on Friday British Summer Time. So those nominations were recorded in advance of tonight's shows. Uh, we are going to add Ian Toms to the list uh, of the individual nominations because of his um, individual performance on those missing vowels. And uh, let's comment in the chat from Pam saying, ooh, that's me. Uh, yes, <laughs> it is you. Um, and uh, she put in about spoilers. We did say about spoilers right at the start, Pam. It, it can't really be avoided. But the reason why there were two Brain of Britain's people is because uh, Sarah Trevathan's heat was held. It was meant to be on the day of the Queen's funeral. Um, and so it then didn't get broadcast and was held over. So there were two this week. Um, so, yes, yeah, so now we move on to um, Champagne Moment of the Week. And it can be anything that you saw or heard or did on tonight's quizzing. It could be a great question, it could be a great answer, it could be anything. Um, 
let's start with you, Kashava. Uh, wait, does this have to be from Mastermind? Or can I pick one of the it other could shows? could be any of the shows that you watched tonight, yeah. Honestly, I am going to remember Ian on Missing Vowels. If you ask me what I'm going to remember from today. Because <laughs> uh, the, the, the Dead Rogers Dead Turner thing, I didn't know who Dead Rogers was. That's not going to be funny for me. But uh, yeah, so Ian, Ian on Missing Vowels was the standout for me today. Yeah, good nomination. Nick? Uh, am I allowed to nominate the same thing? Yes, you can. Well, in that case, that's definitely what I will be doing. Even <laughs> just being sat next to that phenomenal performance, it uh, fills you full of confidence. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll nominate Ian for his brilliant buzzer work um, and general all round play as well. Yeah, fantastic. Ian, how about you? Um, probably just about saying Sphygmo Manometer. <laughs> 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 Because I sort of mumbled it, and then we had went back, and I had a, took a run at it, and didn't like <laughs> how I'd said it, and then got mocked by Victoria for being a perfectionist by asking, "Can I try that again, please?" <laughs> so just about oh, I love came that. Out okay. It is. It is nice. Those little moments that nobody else will know apart from you, but it does speak to you, and that that's good. Uh, Michael. Yeah, I'm going to be boring because I thought about it before I came on, and I'm also going to say you're not missing rounds. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Fatima. Um, so obviously, uh, I, I don't know if you guys saw this missing rounds performance. But it was really good. <laughs> um, so that one, and also Kashava, that like you, you, you gave Ben a good run for his money you know like looking down at my at my scores like you you got very very close it was an impressive performance mm. um so yeah that that too that too and um you guys singing sweet caroline <laughs> apart from nick obviously for ethical yeah. uh, objections uh but yeah that was also delightful because i think for us as well we'd figured it out so we were like are they gonna start singing yeah, yeah they're singing <laughs> Uh, Pam says, I liked Ian singing. There you go. You got a fan. Go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, as for me, um, I mean, the Ted Rogers thing tickled me. I'm of that generation. Um, uh, I There's a lot I liked. I loved um, it's Anu um, and his joy in that um, that specialist subject round on Laurel and Hardy. It's just, it was just lovely the way he was in, you know, Part in the part in Absolutely. the black chair and part actually watching those films in his mind and just enjoying them all over mm -hmm. again. Um, but it, it does kind of have to come down to Ian's missing vowels. But I did think actually there were a number of nice moments yeah. um, throughout uh, OTC tonight. But you know you can't ignore a missing vowels round like that. Yeah. I, so I, if I was to add anything else, uh, it would be that partly um, it's great seeing two mates on TV and doing well. But I know that. Um, Ian had, Ian had been concerned about how you would come across um, and you came across really, really well. And I love the fact that that is the case. And hopefully that now gives you um, confidence going forward. Um, the rest of the world has seen what we've seen for the last yeah. God knows how many years. And, and it's yeah. great that they did. Thank you. So, and I know it will make you really uncomfortable hearing all of that, Ian. Because <laughs> <you> <laughs> so perhaps I should carry on. But uh, no, at that point, um, I just want to say thank you so much to everybody for coming on. Uh, Kashava, uh, Nick, Ian, Michael, Fatima. Really appreciate having you all on. Um, hopefully we'll see you all again at some point soon. Thanks to everybody watching. Uh, who's been watching and chatting along in the chat. Um, Catherine, her champagne moment was getting 18 on the bounce on the contestants' final chase set today. <laughs> yep, champagne moment can be anything. So, uh, well done, Catherine. Um, so, yes, thank you. We will be back, of course, next week um, with a lineup that I haven't uh, got sorted out yet. So, mystery. Um, but uh, I'm sure it'll be another it's great... Only connect lineup, I can tell you that much. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, that's good to know. So, I'm sure we'll have only connect. And uh, in a couple of weeks' time, we've got David Bodicum coming on, who was uh, an early mastermind of only yeah. connect. So, I've an opportunity mm. to speak to a guy who was writing the puzzles for the uh, early series and pretty much kind of show running a lot of it. So, um that will be a special guest. And uh, yeah, have a great week. Um, stay safe. Stay slightly safer than myself and Valerie were during the week this week. Um, and um, yeah, look after yourselves. And we will see you again soon. And we will play you out with a short little thing about... Um, oh, 
did we do lunchtime quiz time we did didn't we yeah um yeah so uh we'll just play you out with another thank you to our patreons and uh, uh we'll see you again next week goodbye <laughs>